In this episode, I explore the Lamster to Kingdom line, and it branched out to New Radnor and Prestine. And I'm joined on this journey by the grandfather of hip railway enthusiasm, the talented writer, broadcaster, and cabaret performer, Ian Marchant, and also resident of Prestine. Ian Marchant was a subject in a question for University Challenge, which was, what do Euclid's theorem, Ian Marchant and Blondie have in common? Parallel lines. So Ian, how was your visit to the Hereford Market town of Lemster? It's all right. <laughs> I went to Roster Books. I went to, to uh, the Oxfam shop to look at books. Uh, I went to the Merchant's House to see if I could see some books. And I had lunch at the Flying Dutchman. Right. Do they do a vegan option there? or is it? I've no idea. <laughs> <laughs> a full fry up. It's a nice town. It's underrated, it's sort of bits of it are like a medieval slum, one of the few slums, medieval slums kind of left. So I guess, I guess the track sort of would have crossed over here, did it? No, we're coming up, so we have to go through the, uh, the existing crossings. Yeah. Which are coming up, this is all in real time. Uh, normally I try and edit to uh, make it any shorter, but on this, this occasion I'm trying to make it as realistic as possible. Uh, as so, we crawl through the countryside. <clears throat> so is this the road crossing by B&Q where one of our friends was busted for trying to race the barrier coming down? Right. Uh, no names. <laughs> no names. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, I don't know if he was busted. So yeah, here, you can see this is the, uh, the branch line coming off now. Oh uh, yeah. The joy of being able to fly over your old railways is you can actually find them. Uh, so, as I said, one, one thing about this branch line, there's no spectacular viaducts, there's no tunnels, there's no travelling through beautiful, well, uh, wild countryside. Yeah. It, it is very much Herefordshire, in, in a sort of semi-idyllic Herefordshire. Yeah. Um, you can sort of imagine that maybe this is a place where you could have had an Ealing comedy going on between a, a bus much, company so. maybe and a, um, and a train company as they yeah. battle it out in the 1950s. Yeah, it's a got that field Thunderbolt in short. Yeah. It would, it, this would have been a, a good place to film the Tickfield Thunderbolt, yeah. Uh, For, especially since we're going to Titley. Yes. Uh, that's not real. There is no summer girls. I think that's just the name of their farm. Yeah. They decided to make it rather sort of railway like. Yeah. But they, they've used the existing um, track there for their drive. Nice. And then it just goes direct. If the, the medieval road network, as I found out, trying to get to a location to film this, is a lot more windier. So you know, yeah. railways were like motorways in there, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, you could, you could argue that. Yeah. I mean, roads. By between 1790 and 1820, 1830 maybe, Britain had the best road network in Europe. Road network? Road network. From the toll gate laws? And from, from turnpikes. Turnpikes, so, that's yeah. The, yeah. Um, it had engineers who were interested in the subject, um, above all Thomas Talford, um, who, who built the Menai Straits Bridge, the road bridge. Yeah. 30 years after it was completed, there was grass growing up the middle of the Menai Bridge Be because the roads had fallen back to such as... They fell away because no one was using them because the rail went, railway went everywhere. You know, it went, bizarrely, from Lempster to Kington. Yeah, which, you know, as we'll see, is not exactly a major thoroughfare and... Uh... Well, if you look out the window, you can immediately identify the problem with the line. Uh, yeah, it's the, mainly, there's nothing there. Yeah, it's, I mean, I think there were probably more hedgerows. Yeah, that's just driving past a farm, and you you see these remnants of the railways. Yeah, um, I recorded this because these are all corn mills, you know, uh, uh, for grinding, uh, and they all ran off very low pressure streams. Yeah, and I think they were kind of running right up to the war. Um, there's another one that comes up. As we get clo closer to Kingsland, which is the one you pass, you can see it. You can actually see yep. the, the working paddle. 
which was huge because it yeah. had to just take a, a, you know, a tiny flow of string to drive an entire um, uh, milling. I'm not too sure what this is here. We've got this weird... A siding, maybe? Well, further up, there was a siding to uh, 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 Shobden yeah. and the airfield there, and that was put in during the war. This is Kingsland, which is one of uh, another quaint uh, village in Herefordshire. A very beautiful quaint village. Uh, I tend to know it from the uh, auctions, uh, getting a car for three hundred. Yeah, quid. yeah. Um, but yeah, that's one of the other mills on the way, and you can actually see the old mill workings. So the large building you see there is um, uh, the coal yard. Which has still survived. Yeah. And then that's uh, Border Oak, who make all the extensions or the new oak framed buildings. New posh houses that, new posh that houses. look sort of oldy in a way. Um, I think if you want to get an extension. Yeah. Um, and Lord knows I want to get an extension. What made out of oak, hand assembled by um, a craftsman. Yeah. So this is obviously, this photo is obviously for Of course, they, loads of people would work there, wouldn't they? These stations would employ, you know, three or four people. I think the overmanning <clears throat> comes kind of clearer later on in the trip because yeah. they manned crossings and yeah. you've got a house. And it just seems to be for something, you know, uh, yeah, a few hours, well, maybe a couple of hours work a day. Yeah, there would be four trains. Yeah, and then you went out, opened the gate, closed the gate. Yeah. Um, I pre it's I mean, a good thing. I'd have been prepared to try that. <laughs> I've never been very good at having jobs, but if one of those came along, I'd certainly give it thought. Uh, yeah, I mean, the level... Isn't it interesting the way, you, you, you know, you could restore it? Uh, yeah, I think most of the track... I mean, you'll, you'll see later when we get to Kington, the, the, the track has been built on. Um... But yeah, most of the, the route is pretty well intact. This is one of the tragedies of, you know, this railway isn't really one of Beeching's railways, not really. No, because it was uh, 1957. Well, it started to wear away kind of even before the Second War. People were coming to terms with the fact that... Yeah. that, that but but the thing with beaching and with this that the criminal thing that they they don't do in France is to take up the lines. Yeah, yeah, I think because you never know what might have come along. You never we we I can see why they stopped the services, but not really why they lifted the lines. Yeah, I think that kind of hurry to. Um, what I always find amazing is doing these old lines. Is it this is seventy years, and or or sometimes less. You know, sixty five. Uh, Oh, oh, uh, this this was lifted in sixty five, um, and some of the tracks that follow are in a worse state than, say, Hadrian's Wall, which is two thousand years. So, all that infrastructure, uh, and you know, within a generation or two, it's gone. Yeah. Um, and you know, there's some places where you can see where the farmers have got in there and ploughed up the uh, 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 the, the tracks that. Yeah, it's completely missing. But we, we do have these nice green corridors now. Um, Which is lovely. I mean, lovely for, for, for wildlife, that it has that interconnectivity. It's one of the things that wildlife needs. So it's an incredibly picturesque Pembridge. Um, yeah, but unfortunately, with a road through it. With a road through it, yeah. I get, I get, you know, the 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 the, the, the um, tarmac lorries that that come from Stanage Quarry, yeah, which would have been carried on the line, are now carried on big wagons that thump through Pembridge. See, that's one thing I can't quite work out is because we will eventually arrive at uh, uh, Stanage Quarries. Is they've been running for you know a hundred years. Um, so why didn't they keep the track just to ship out the, the limestone? Because they're still shipping out limestone by the truckload. It's wrong. It's it's a real mistake. It's, it's, it was a real mistake we, that was taken, you know, as you say, 50, 60 years ago. 
Of course, it was, it was very slow. You know, what? in fairness, when the buses came along, which were the first bus service was 1919. Sergeant's buses, who, who still run our buses around here now occasionally, started in the 1920s. Right. So, so they competed directly with the railway and were much quicker. Be, because this is, you know, this has gone all around the house. It's gone. But one of the points you've made in other videos is, you know, if you're a railway, you have to pay for the tracks. You have to pay for all the infrastructure. If you're a bus company... Effectively, you know, you don't have to pay for a massive... No, railway. somebody else Some, is paying yeah. for your infrastructure. Yeah, well, we have to... Oh, that's a tremendous hall. Which one's that? This is um, uh, Marston Hall. Wow. Um, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Um, Miles even from Marston, <laughs> probably. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I think Marston may just be the name of a farm. Yeah. Um, I mean, not quite the kind of Scottish layer where you get to build your own railway station in the middle of nowhere. Um, I mean, you know, it's it's the green art. It's the Great Midland Plain. It's it's my favourite place in the world. So this is some of the infrastructure. I mean, they built it to last. Um, so the track's coming over. Yeah, and weirdly, uh, it, the rail line didn't nearly open on time because it was supposed to have a bridge at Pembridge. <clears throat> At Pembridge, um, but instead they just had a track, uh, just a level crossing. But um, the inspectors allowed for them to open the line and then do a retrospective planning permission to uh, not have a bridge, but instead have a, um, have a, a level crossing. So we're coming into the hills. We're we're coming to the um, coming into Wales. The fields are getting a bit smaller. Yeah, the, I mean, some of these are fruit, uh, a lot of potato, a lot of apples. Uh, well, we have there are some orchards along, but you can see they're not in the same state they would have been, um, you know, twenty, forty, uh, sixty years ago. No, of course not. Um, I saw a field of thistles the other day. Right. Which is um, used for some vegan cookery of some kind. Thistles. You sure it's just a lazy farmer? No. Um, Yes, uh, the other great crop now is chickens, um, and I can tell you it was noisier and smellier um, in real life. Uh, so you know these huge chicken farms now are taking over the uh, the countryside. Yeah, um, because you know people want to eat chicken, cheap chicken, horrible chicken. Shame um, it's not a luxury anymore, because then we wouldn't have chicken shit in our rivers around here. No. Uh, it is one beautiful. chicken a month, people, from a lovely organic farm. Um, and stop shitting up our rivers. Where's so this? This is Chick Tickley Junction. We will come back to Tickley okay. Junction in more detail, but we're going to head off to Kington. Um, Are we still it. following the line here? We're still following the line. It goes through, you can kind of make it out through many oh, of those yeah. trees. And that's about the only major bit of uh, uh, cuttings they did, uh, which brings us to our next... Um, wow, is, yeah, 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 yeah. And this, it's, this, it would be well, difficult to find that cutting, really, because it's going right through forestry and woods. And... Yeah, and this brings us up to... Bullets. Is there a path? Is that a path? Um, bits and pieces. It's not... I mean, it, I, I think it's maybe intact. It's just probably overgrown now. Um, so this is coming up to Bullock's Crossing. And that's how it would have looked in... Judging, judging from the car, probably you know, 64. That house, that, that house there... How much do I want that house? Right. On a scale from 0 to 10. Uh, we're talking 11 here. Uh, yeah, we are. It goes then, right up to 11. Yeah, but you'd have to open and close the gate four times a day. Yeah, I'd be prepared. Well, that's eight, eight, yeah, four times a day to open and close. Yeah. I mean, mate, did they, was it like... That's you know, eight things you've got to do every day. <laughs> I could have coped with that thing. Oh, yeah. Look at this. So this is as we're sweeping up. We're following the, the, the river valley now uh, up into Kington. That It flooded often. It flooded a lot. This is one of the main problems on the line. But it's we flooding on the arrow. I, I, I've got the same problem uh, you know, every time if I want to go and catch the train to Birmingham in winter after the storms. And yeah. inevitably the uh, embankment the near Welshpool yeah. has been swept away by the River Seven. Yeah. Um, and there's a replacement bus service. That, unfortunately, they just had buses that could get through the floods better than the railway could. 
this is the sort of so this, the point the, the the fantastic thing it it's always seemed to me is is that we live on the here in prestige on the edge of what they call the Great Green Desert of Wales. You live in the Great Green Desert. Yeah. The Great Green Desert. And there's nothing, there's nothing. And the further you go, the more nothing there is. Um, Nothingness well, the... expands <laughs> until there's like, you know, there's nothing. There are four towns in Radnorshire. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've got, outside my house, I've got two roads. I mean, if there was ever a crime committed, effectively, you know, the police could just have four roadblocks. We, yeah, I mean, round here, you know. Well, you probably need about eight round here. It's a little bit more, a bit more trickier. Yeah, I mean... For the police, the, less tricky for the uh, the criminal, as he wants to do a getaway. Yeah, I mean, it's very difficult for criminals to operate in these communities. Everyone knows their mum. <laughs> yes. You know. So here we are, Kington. But my point is... The kind of insane optimism. They called it the eye of Radnorshire, Kington, even though it's not in Radnorshire. They felt that sort of Radnorshire open up. The whole Radnorshire market would open up from here. And in fact, in the years that the railway was running, the population dropped. Right. Well, everybody was jumping on the train to go to Probably. a happier climate. I mean, see, Kington was quite, quite the, the, the centre of uh, industry. I mean, they had yards and... That's the old uh, engine house. It, yes, it, it sort of hoped it would be. I didn't know. <clears> they <throat> built, with, there was optimism here, wasn't there? Yeah. And <clears> that <throat> was never really justified, that optimism. Because, I mean, in, in railway, in the railway history, uh, in your book, uh, Parallel Lines, yeah. uh, a little gem, according to The Guardian. Yeah, published um, by uh, Bloomsbury, I think, still in print. Okay. Um, you mentioned the late ISBN. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned there was kind of like a heyday when eventually people were just raising money, but there was no profit to be had. None at all. Uh, so what was that sort of eighteen seventies and later or earlier? But, oh, by you know this railways eighteen sixties eighteen seventies. Yeah. By this time, they're building railways to. The beauty is they didn't even stop here. No. I think ah, oh, we've got to this place in the middle no, no, of nowhere. We... Let's go. Somewhere even more middle of nowhere. Well, you could argue that Kington was somewhere. I mean, it's quite yeah, nice. It's an agricultural but, town. I mean, it's once you get town. up to this end, once you get up to Stannard, the, there was the quarry here, and I should imagine that was... Still there. So where are we now? So we're coming up to Stannard. OK. Uh, so this is where the big trucks, the big tarmac trucks, still pound up and down the A44. Yeah. One of the great roads of Europe, for instance. This is uh, the Stanner Hills and Stanner Rocks, and they're a billion-year-old. Uh, it's Pluton, so it's deep. It, it, it's formed deep in the earth, but a billion years ago. Um, and it's managed to survive. There's three little hills, and they're the oldest rocks in Wales. Um, they could be the oldest rocks in England or Wales. And you go up to Scotland and see some of my other videos, you can see three to four billion-year-old rocks. Um, but it's like a black granite. Um, but... Yeah, which is and that's the rock they're using for hardcore, is it? No, they just use a little bit of here to get the road through. That place was up for sale about ten years ago for oh, fifteen thousand pounds. Wow! Uh, and there's one of the big lorries going by. Um, and you know, be, it's a bit noisy being on the main road, uh, and they they yeah. built. The A44, though, isn't the M6, is isn't it? Isn't the M6. <laughs> no. Um, You'd manage. Oh, and this, wow. So, yeah. so this is where they would have lo loaded stone? Um, is this, no, the stone is this... loading we'll see in a bit. Um, this, that's the original sort of passenger side. Right. So I think the bit that we're seeing on just now... But the, the, the optimism, the passenger side. What passengers? <laughs> So here, yeah. the, the track doesn't follow on the right-hand side. That's the old road. Um, yeah. So the track actually follows the, the road all the trucks go through, which has been built okay. at great expense to allow wow. big uh, quarry trucks to come through. Yeah. So that was the original um, uh, rail bed yeah. ran up. Uh, and then you can see in the distance where they've sort of removed a, a small mountain uh, in, in limestone. So we're coming into the Radnor Valley now. Uh, I'm not too sure which side. This this side 
I'm not too sure which side is the Radnor Valley. We eventually get up to Radnor. But that's the Radnor's in the Radnor Valley. Yes, but this... But there's no Bart. It's in the Radnor Valley. It's when you come over the hill on the A44. And ah, you yeah. Go past Kinnerton and... Yes, that's not... That valley is the one next door to me. No, it is. Oh, OK. I shall take your word for that. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, Dolia. How do you pronounce this? Dolia. Dolia. That's the old station. Yeah. Uh, which is now part of the, the offices for the um, for the quarry. For the quarry, yeah. Mm. And that's the which passenger side. Which is in side. the Rackham Valley. But the yes, Walton Basin. That's the number of staff. Them. Yeah. And was it five staff wow. to that place? A station master, a porter. A... Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I, the entire, and that's the old random company did the quarrying, and you can still see the chutes where they would yeah. quarry the rock and then dump it straight into trucks. But they still ship out. The yeah. drone is great because I've never actually seen into the quarry. You, well, I lived in the Ratner Valley, or Walton Basin, if you prefer, um, and you could hear the explosions a couple of times a day. Amazing, isn't it? Hardcore. And, and to put under new roads, that's the stupid thing. Yeah, I mean, originally they were mining the stuff to make um, a, a, a clinker for railway tracks. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. And and then they sort of, which they carried on railway trains, and then they turned it into somewhere for hardcore for roads. Yeah. Now here we are coming up into the valley. Yeah, so I, the actual valley's to our right, and then Radnor's straight ahead. So this sort of takes, yeah, the easiest route. Yeah. Um, and yes, nobody lives here. I, mean, I think uh, Powers at this point has the lowest density in, uh, of habitation in uh, England and Wales. Oh, Rad Radnorshire is Radnorshire is the size of Surrey and has a population of twenty-two thousand. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think at the whole of Paris that the Isle of Dogs in London has a bigger population. Y yeah, yeah, than the yeah. whole of Paris. Yeah. Here we are in New Radnor. It's weird caravan park thing. Yeah, and. They were going to continue it all the way across to Aberystwyth, which yeah. was, and when you say talk about optimism, I know there is nothing between, between New Radnor. No, no, there isn't anything. No, yeah. So we're going back to Titley Junction, and so, okay. the, the, so they had a whole, <clears throat> they had a train just to do this short distance from Titley to Pristine. It that's wasn't right. part of the larger network. It no, that's right. Junction. <clears throat> um, so I was saying about Stanner, that was up for sale for 15000 from the local yeah. authority. Uh, this is somebody, his name's Bob, um, it's closed now, so yeah. he obviously doesn't want um, uh, people to be annoying and turn up. Um, but he has built his own sort of independent museum. That's fantastic. Because you, you would change here for Prestine. Yes. Uh, the, the trains yes. went to... Um, I have a timetable here. The train sort of kind of went to Kington and you changed at Titley for Prestine or even on to New Radnor. New Radnor was, they used it for uh, daffodils. The Radnor Valley was a big daffodil growing area and um, that was one of the main traffics on it in the spring. Uh, but I mean, from a commercial point of view, that was quite good. Six hours it would take you to go from Radnor to the heart of London. Not no, bad, is it? Yeah, I mean, I'd struggle to do that now. Yeah, the first four being between Radnor and Lempster. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, it wasn't that long. I think if you look at the time, uh, the timetable, it was. Yeah, I mean, to do that fifteen miles, it was probably just forty minutes. Ago. So, so this is coming, where we split. We've split off now. Yeah. Fro from the Lempster to to Kington and. New Radnor line. Oh and no, so no, not this, quite. So oh, okay. We, so we, we carry on back to the chicken farm. Oh right. Okay. So yeah, it's a good mile or so before we get to our, which was coming up now. So we get our spur, which then heads off into uh, Preston. Yeah. Preston now spelt with an e. Yes. And according to things I've read in books and so on. It was the railway companies who added the E. The, 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 the proper well spelling of Prestine, apparently, doesn't have an E. So the fact that now Prestine is even more difficult to spell 
is right. due to the railway company, so, so we thought we can, there should be an E on the end. So we can blame Universal Time and the E on the end of Pacific. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, that's right. Universal Time's handy sometimes. The E on pr the end of Prestige, Famous. never. <laughs> it does make a long place name longer. Yeah, you've got... Odd, because it's not even its Welsh name. But there we are, apparently. that It was... The, ah, look at this. So now we're cutting across into Wales and um, different landscape. And yet still, all the time, you think, if only, you know, I could win the lottery... 140 million quid, I'd restore the line and have a heritage line running between Prestine and Titley Junction. Oh, just between Titley Junction? 140 <laughs> million would cover that. <laughs> right, so you... Ah, oh, this is the crossing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, this is Forge, uh, the, the Forge crossing. Ah, oh, so this is what I want as my job, so I, to run Forge, to live there. Right, and you just know, have a sit about Titley smoking and... fags and drinking tea all day. You'd have to open the gate. Again. By the end, there are only three trains a day yeah, okay. on this line. So you're just doing... That's like... six jobs. That's an open, a close, an open, a close, and an open, a close. All the rest of the time, trots up. I, I wonder if it was sort of like some weird uh, sort of retirement programme. You know, yeah. like the Legion, where, you know, you, yeah. you, if you're a Legion, you'd be tied to a farm. Yeah, you'd, you'd be tied to a farm. You'd be doing other things as well. Right. You wouldn't better make a living. You know, maybe it's just like a retirement plan, but I, I'm, yeah, I, I have no idea how they managed to actually... Manage. I met a bloke the other day whose dad is a railway crossing keeper, still. And? Oh, did you not get the any best more? job. <laughs> so here is about the only piece of infrastructure which is reasonably big, which is two arches, but it is buried in uh, the undergrowth. Uh, it's a two-arch bridge, but that's about yeah. as exciting as it gets. No, the whole thing is, is exciting because... It's 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 a sort of memory of a countryside that you know people are in danger of forgetting, uh, you know, a way of living, traditional sort of farming, you know. Problem is, is with the arrival of the motor vehicle, it is just much easier, you know, to live in the countryside than to wait for. I mean, at one time there'd be seven or eight trains a day, and then seven or six and, and then in the end kind of two or three and then in the end it was only used for freight from about 1957 on but again it, it, they'd closed this whole line in 1951 because of a national shortage of coal so several branch lines were closed temporarily which is a way of saying right this is completely idiotic and we're spending our coal on Sending, you know, three trains a day to Prestine when everyone's going on the bus, which by this time, of course, they were. Yeah, I, I, I mean, coal was so, you know, the, the trains ran on coal, the, the trains moved the coal, pretty well coal ran everything. I mean, it was this extra, incredible infrastructure, all based on well, you know, and a natural resource of yeah, coal, which and was being gobbled up by um, uh, town gas production. No, and, and, and the main um, thing that was coming out of Prestine was timber for pit props. Right. So there's an old friend of mine called Olive, who's who's dead now, who, who, who used to work making pit props with her dad. And she used to say, oh, you could tell the time by that train, but only three times a day. <laughs> and she, she used to say to me, it, my dad put the biggest stick ever carried on that railway line out of Prestine, the biggest stick, meaning, you know, a very large tree. So yeah, it's it's so this was coal as well. Yeah, you know, although the whole thing is about coal. By 1951, national economic crisis, one of them obviously, um, th they stopped all traffic on this time, in order not to waste coal. Yeah. Oh, okay. so, so you know, by 1957, I think passenger traffic had stopped. Yeah, and then freight, and I'm still amazed. I mean, the freight train was you know a train. Uh, the the brake brake van and yeah. then maybe two carriages in between and so commercially, I I mean how does that work commercially the amount of t I mean I have no idea how many, how many it tons didn't. it didn't and 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 uh, you know there were people working on the station and and you know a train puffing up and down the line with crew on it and having to maintain it it didn't make sense by 
the late 1950s. Now, people always blame beaching, and, and sometimes rightly. So we're coming but this in. had had its day, so this is now the bypass in Presty. Yeah, which again goes along the uh, original track there. We get to the Prestine, time. home of the free. Prestine, home of the free. Home to the Brummies, the hippies and me. I'm me, you're one of the hippies. I, I've been known to be called that. Yeah. And, and here coming up on the left is the car park here, the recycling centre. That's the site of the old station. Yeah, and Station Road. Because um, for archaeologists and historians in the future, there's an awful lot of places which will have names like Station Road. And I say, well, why was it a station? Was yeah, there a yeah. station there, perhaps? Or maybe yeah, yeah. a fire station? Railway Terrace. Uh, yeah. And Railway yeah. Terraces and such like. Yeah. Um, the Railway Inn. You see them all the time. So that's one of the last trains, and in colour, it kind of brings uh, it, it brings it into our time. Yeah, you know, this is not a long time ago. No, no, 1964 was was the last time the the trains arrived. Did, I'd love to have seen it. The heart of Wales is amazing. I think this is the last train. Uh, no, this is one of the specials, which I think was spot a special, yeah. Uh, and this was the timetable. Ford crossing. Wow. So here's the fascinating oh, yeah. thing is, this is the latter. Um, to extend the line from Brestine all the way to where I live in Kerzoos. And in between there is a mountain and nobody lives in between me and No, and how amazing. Um, so it's a... And it'll go to Lungunthalo. So No, so so here it wants to go up to Lungunthalo to join what is now called the Heart of Wales Line. Yeah. Which miraculously still exists. But it would then have to go through that to go up to the Van Dinham Parish. What? Which is near me. So from Lungunthalo, you know, Lungunthalo Station yeah, is about 100 million billion miles away from Lungunthalo. Yeah. I'm, I'm not even too sure. It's not either. even, it's about five miles or something. It's yeah. perhaps less than but, I mean, it takes me, in, the, in uh, driving, it takes me an hour to do not many miles. Yeah. Um, it, but it is just the terrain it has to go through. So it would have been extraordinary, and it would have been an amazing railway to do that section. Um, but would have connected up with Moat Lane, which was an important junction for uh, uh, Great Western. But, yeah. Um, no, just massive optimism. Um, and, you know, it was approved. Um, <laughs> Solicitors for the bill. And the yard. Now, it's interesting there's some caravans in this yard here. This this old factory is still open. Yeah, it's the auto centre. I'm not yeah. so sure what it would have been back in Prestine days. Still shit. Still, still owned by that horrible man. Um, so, Ian. What's this? This is the camp coach holiday. So you could have come to Prestine. It was on the location. And, and that is a camp coach what? in Prestine Station. No! Uh, and you could have been in the siding with the coal and the and the chickens and everything else going. Camp by. coach with, has a different connotations <laughs> yeah. these days, doesn't it? Um, but you can see Central Wales. Wow, Western, tight B without an E, uh, and it would have cost three to. Here's Mum. Pounds. Good night, darling. <laughs> Dream of choo choos. Good night, Mummy. Yes, darling. Daddy's no. Here's Daddy. No, oh, no, no we're no, in no. these bunks. Uh, We've got to sleep in these bunks. I'm afraid there'll be no. Rumpy pumpy with us and mummy this evening. We can talk about trains at my bedtime. Take it, let's under our ties. That's where gentlemen used to wear ties everywhere. Here we are, uh, plump yes. up the old. Yeah, only get the one GWR um, pillow. Oh, what? You Somebody somewhere's got a GWR pillowcase. How camp coach. And they, and they would pick you up. You'd get you'd hire your coach for three to six pounds, which in nineteen thirty would be about the same price as hiring a camper van, so one thousand one thousand, two thousand pounds or so. And then you have your kitchen. I think this is a later one, this is nineteen fifties. Uh the one that went to Prestine yeah. in nineteen thirty three all the way up to Look at these chaps, they're good chaps. They're helping the little women with the housework. <laughs> Here, I'll take a turn at the at the drying up, darling. Oh, look at this little oven. I'll pop it in here. How marvellous. You chaps sit down and talk about trains. But, uh, absolutely brilliant. The, the controls on the gas. Yeah. And then you could actually have your own dining car as you were being transported to your wow. idyllic location. 
Look at this. Oh, well done, Marjorie. Thank you, Marjorie. Oh, lovely vegetables the lot. Ha 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 ha. We've made them... We, they wanted to go to a hotel. We've made them come here. What? They've had milk delivered. Yeah, well, obviously. It's the countryside. It's milk, chickens yeah. and, and bread. Raw probably. milk, yeah. <laughs> well, yes. yes, proper raw milk. Yeah. Um, I would have, Please drink it the same day. I, I don't usually want to go back in time. But do you know what? You've got me. That would be me. Oh, Mummy. How exciting. Mummy, you are a brick. Thanks ever so much for bringing us on this camping holiday. Oh, it gets a bit steamy, though. Tilly lamps. Yeah, I mean, it's completely... Enamel uh, tableware. Child-looking long... Please, may I go out, Mummy? No, because <laughs> you're on a railway line, you stupid kid. Oh. That's just, she's just coming. What? This, what? This is the best thing ever. This is the best thing ever. Look how bored we are. How much we hate one another. Oh. Now, for obviously, for school kids, I think it's quite good. Um, Look at that. You know, I, this was obviously a, um, a scout special and train spotting. And you can not only holiday in a in a train, train carriage, but you could also stand very you close stand to the rails. Next to the rails. <laughs> and um, Hurrah! Were, hurrah. Hello, boys. Here's a friendly old tank engine. Absolutely. Betjeman, why didn't Betjeman write, you know, along the pristine line, the camping coaches lined, mums and dads drinking fizzy beer, all of that. This is fizzy pop. I, I, I delight in this. Uh, it's completely new to me, but it's effectively, you know, now we have people. Um, and people would come to Prestine and holiday here. You wouldn't do that now, would you? Well, no, people would come to a festival. You wouldn't do that now because <laughs> because of the chicken farms. Uh, th and this is the and last this train. Is the 1964, wow. Uh, Prestine. The 1964 end. How beautiful. But you think you could have had things like camping coaches here and people could still have used the line. Uh, so initially, I think... The service, of course, had to go. But the line... Cheerio, come again.